hopefully an afternoon of entertainment, on a topic on investigating the ICDS. ICDS is a special program on nutrition in India, which will be introduced by Tariro. It's a nutritional scheme at the village level. And um, we have one young student from the US under the World Food Prize program who's come to be an intern at Dikrisat at RP Markets Institutions and Policies. I hope immersing in the village was an enjoyable one, I saw, from all of the um, interactions that she has. But uh, let me give you some notion on you know, um, how this work has emerged and uh, how a 16-year-old high school junior from North Dakota, USA, is delivering a seminar on ICDS nutritional scheme, um, where the orientation of the World Food Prize program uh, is to encourage leadership among young with potential leadership um, in the US to come to ICRISAT to have uh, international immersion. And we already have four or five years of experience with them. No matter how young they are, they've delivered a series of seminars every year, an incredibly interesting one that led us to undertake further work here at the Crusade because of their immersion and insights coming from the villages. And for some of them who have continued their studies in the US are now in their graduate school and doing very good uh, work in the area uh, which is related to the work that they've done here, uh, most of them uh, in village level studies. So um, Tariro Malconi, who originally comes from Zimbabwe, she was born there, um, was grew up in the US. Um, and there is, a, I think she got this World Food Prize uh, award stint in Indi India because of her strong record of community service and passion about this. And not only with an int real interest in uplifting the poorest of the poor, she has dedicated herself in many projects and events that create awareness on the complex global issues and poverty and hunger. And she will be talking and sharing about that uh, and how she was very interested uh, in immersing herself in the village asking very specific issues of nutrition, so that uh, in a very few weeks that she was here, she was able to learn lots of things that she'd like to share with us today. So Tarino will be talking on investigating the ICDS nutritional scheme on a micro level with insights on the village of Arapale. Uh, under the World Food Prize, Borlaug grew an international internship with RPMIP Crusat. Tarino? I'd like to thank you, Dr. Van Flynn, for the warm introduction. Welcome to my presentation. Thank you so much for coming. And I'm excited to share the research that I've conducted over the past eight weeks with you. So the contents of this presentation will include just a, br a brief background, the, my results, my methods, and my objectives and then my conclusion, and then also um, my village and cultural experience while, thank you, while in India. So for an introduction, um, according to the FAO 2013 World Factbook, from 2005 to 2011, 44% of India's children aged zero to five were undernourished. This is in comparison with the, two, with the 1990 to 1995 data that stated that 50% of India's children were undernourished. There is a huge disconnect between the high crop production and stubbornly high malnourishment rates in India. So this graph or this chart derived from the FAO depicts this. As you can see, India is in the highest range for cereal producing countries. But then the next chart depicts that India is in the 15 to 25% for prevalence of undernourishment. So the question that I had to ask myself when I saw this data was, 
why does India have such a high prevalence of childhood malnourishment, and yet it has such a high crop production yield? So unfortunately, the World Food Prize did not grant me a lifetime in India to solve this question. So the quest, this question became the driving force behind my research at Microsat. So the Integrated Child Development Services, also commonly known as the ICDS, is, well, I'll, this is the chart of just the services provided, and then I'll tell you the background and then we'll come back to this. So the ICDS is, was originated on October 2nd, 1975, and it is now known as the largest pre-primary school program in the world. It's provi it provides its services to over 8 million mothers and over 39 million children across India. And as you can see, the services provided are supplementary nutrition provided by the Anganwadi worker, which is like the teacher at the center, and the Anganwadi helper, who is the woman who assists the teacher in any way possible. Um, the immunization is provided by the auxiliary nurse midwife, or yeah, just the nurse, and the health checkups are provided by the Anganwadi workers as well as the nurse, and the referral services, which means that if someone comes to the center saying that they're sick, the Anganwadi worker and nurse will work together to see if the person should be referred to a hospital. And the ICDS also offers a preschool education program, um, and the services provided by the Anganwadi worker, as well as the nutrition and health education provided by the nurse and the Anganwadi worker. So in the, the supplementary nutrition program in, in Andhra Pradesh varies from the other ones across India because the supplementary because the supplementary nutrition programs vary by state, basically, in India. And so the four main foods that are provided in India in the uh, in the Andhra Pradesh ICDS service are kichidi given to children aged six given to children aged three years to six years, halwa given to children aged three years to six years, as well as pregnant and lactating women as part of the take home ration and MTF, which stands for Modified Therapeutic Food, which is given to children aged six months to three years as part of the take-home ration so that the Anganwadi te teacher does not have to take care of these children, as well as Kukure, which is a snack given to children of all ages and pregnant and lactating women. So this slide shows, shows some of the foods that, um, that are provided. The one that looks like pebbles is Kukure, and the one that you can see, the pepper, that is the kichidi. And the powder is the halwa, which is yeah, provided to the children. Um, these are the ICDS centers in Oropali. We were able to visit all three of the centers. And the top picture shows the outside of the second center that we visited, as well as the scale that, they, that the ICDS uses to conduct its weight for age anthropometric measurements. And the picture on the farthest shows an inside of this third center that we visited. And the government actually does not own this center. It is rented. And this is the Anganwadi helper conducting maintenance in the first center. And she's cleaning up before the children come to the school. And the middle picture shows the height measurements on the wall and it's not required by the ICDS scheme for the workers to record the height measurements but the Anganwadi worker was just interested in doing so so she keeps them on the wall and then the last picture that has a firewood is actually the bathroom facility that is now not working so the children go to the bathroom outside if they need to go. Moving on to my literature review um, this is just a small sampling of the literature that I looked at while at Ikersat. Starting with village and household economies, Walker and Ryan found that as income rises, as a woman's income rises, her household food allocation, uh, her ability to allocate food to, for her household rises as well. But just because she's able to purchase better food does not mean that the woman will purchase food that is more nutritious. It's just that she'll purchase food that tastes better. Um, 
on a study done by Thakur Bhatian Prinja stated that ICDS child beneficiaries tend to only use two services provided by the ICDS, and these services being the immunization and the nutritional supplementation. They suggested that ICDS, that ICDS beneficiaries sh should use all six services because then that would greatly maximize the potential of the scheme throughout the villages. A study done by Lakshin, Daskupta, and Ivan Sheko states that the ICDS malnourishment rate is, or the ICDS is not beneficial towards childhood malnourishment because of improper utilization and implementation throughout the villages. And then finally, a study conducted by Child Rights and Youth stated that, that the malnourishment in India is in fact a public health problem because the government has started to neglect the nutritional education services that they should be providing because within communities, people do not find nutrition to be something of importance. And so they just, the government doesn't feel like it's necessary to provide this education anymore. So moving on to my ob main objective for my study, which was to determine the, whether the ICDS nutritional scheme is beneficial towards lessening childhood malnutrition on a micro level. My research question derived from this objective is, is the ICDS nutritional scheme beneficial towards lessening childhood malnutrition from ages zero to five in Oropali? And my main research hypothesis is stated that the ICDS nutritional scheme is in fact beneficial towards lessening childhood malnutrition in Oropali. So the following research questions and hypothesis were broken up in order to be analyzed quantitatively and qualitatively. So the first set is which gender is more malnourished? And my hypothesis was that girls are more malnourished than boys in the ICDS scheme. And my second question was, how have each gender's nutritional growth progressed over time? And my hypothesis was that both genders nutritional growth started out very poor, but then ended the, their involvement with the scheme very healthy. My third question was, do men and women place the same level of importance regarding the ICDS nutritional scheme? And my hypothesis stated that men and women do not place the same level of importance regarding the ICDS nutritional scheme. And my final question was, do the Anganwadi worker and helper find the ICDS nutritional scheme to be beneficial towards childhood growth? And my final hypothesis stated that the Anganwadi workers and helpers do find the ICDS nutritional scheme to be beneficial towards childhood growth. So my methodology was broken up for the quantitative and qualitative analysis. So for the quantitative methodology, we, I obtained the anthropometric measurements from the ICDS centers in Oropali. And these measurements were, back at Ikerstat, these measurements were inputted into Excel in increments of every month until the child reached 36 months. And then once the child reached 36 months, the increment changed to every three months until the child reached 60 months of age. And then these, this data set was segregated by center and gender. And then averages were tabulated and compared by gender within all three centers. And then, com and then um, comprehensive, comprehensive averages were formulated for each month of boys and girls. And then for my qualitative methodology, I made two identical focus group discussions. One was for the, grand, for the grandfathers and the fathers of the ICDS child beneficiaries. And the other was for ICDS mothers and also, not, and also mothers of, chil of, the, of children who do not participate at ICDS schemes. And then I also made two questionnaires, one for ICDS parents and another one for ICDS, or yeah, another one for the Anganwadi helper and teacher. And so while at Oropali, we were able to question all six of the Anganwadi helpers and teachers in that questionnaire, and, we, and eight families or parents were randomly selected within each center's 
within each center to be questioned for that questionnaire. And for the focus group discussions, there were 10 ICDS mothers and five non-ICDS mothers, as, and then there were six um, fathers and grandfathers in that, in that focus group discussion. And then these, these results were then tabulated and they were searched for trends and analyzed. So for my results, I found that in all three centers, the data for the boys started out to be completely full, but then each center's chart had less than 30% of its original participants by their five-year mark. And a similar trend was found in the girls' data, where their chart started out completely full, but by the five-year mark, each center and each center's chart only contained 25% of its original participants. But I found that all participants who completed the scheme ended in the highest weight for age category. And this, this finding will be, will be carried out through the rest of the presentation and study. So for my qualitative trends in the ICDS parent questionnaire, I asked the, mo I asked the mother what, what, was, what were the most important reasons for her putting her child in the ICDS in level of importance? And then I asked what her husband's reasons for, were for putting their child in the ICDS in level of importance. So the mother stated that the daycare followed by child interaction, followed by nutrition, and lastly, education were the most important things. And the father stated that education um, child interaction, nutrition, and lastly, the daycare provided were the last important were the most important things. And to look at this, uh, to look at this find, cultural and social norms come into play. Um, the majority of the men had a higher education level than their wives. This would mean that they most likely viewed education as an invaluable asset for their children versus any other service provided by the ICDS. Whereas in, in the village of Oropali, or in, across India, um, it is mostly the woman's job to take care of the children. So if she has somewhere where she can keep her children for a while, while she can go out and earn an income, this service is invaluable to her. So the both of the reasons from the men and the women were put together and the percent the percentages are here of the people who stated what. So about 66% of respondents stated that um, education and food were the most important reasons for joining. And then um, around 50% stated daycare and followed by the child interaction. And just a quick note on the child interaction. This is important because Oropali's family size has gone down. And so before, children were able to play with their cousins and with their brothers and sisters. But since there's not as many children, parents find it important for their children to go and learn how to play with others because there's not that many at home for them to play with. So for my quantitative analysis, this um, graph shows the weight for age comparison of the girls and boys attending the Anganwadi centers at Oropali. Um, the trend that you can see here is that the girls are slightly better nourished than boys, but it's not that big of a gap. They're mostly on the same le level playing field. And a similar trend was um, depict, well, no, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, this graph shows the weight for age comparison between the girls and boys in the VLS data in Andhra Pradesh. And this trend is showing that the girls are better nourished than the boys, except for in the three to four year age range. Um, I do not know what this would account for. Maybe it is because the boys are going to a private school where they offer more supplementary nutrition, but that would just be basis for further study. For the Oropali versus VLS data, it was very hard to compare because they were incomparable because of the sample size. 
the ICDF sample size was around 276, whereas the VLS sample size was around 47. So this chart only shows, only is like a model for when there's more VLS data to compare to the high ICDS sample size. So just the trends that you can see is that the VLS, um, the VLS girls perform a lot better than the ICDS girls. And while these, we, do, we don't know if these girls are participants in the ICDS that were, um, that, that are accounted for in this data, but it does raise, it does raise a contradiction between the, my hypothesis stating that the ICDS data is, that the ICDS is beneficial towards childhood malnutrition because the VLS counterparts are performing a lot better. But then again, this must be taken with a grain of salt because the sample sizes were incomparable. Um, and then there's a similar trend shown for the boys' weight for age comparison within the ICDS or poly and the VLS Andro Pradesh data. And the reason why I didn't compare the only the VLS or poly data was because there's only six um, VLS households with ch their children's data for or poly. So I had to put together all of the VLS households in Andhra Pradesh. So as you can see, the VLS data performed a lot better than the male ICDS data. But if you can see um, in year five, they actually started to level out a little bit. For my qualitative analysis results, I, in the ICDS questionnaires, I asked the women to rate the ICDS, to rate different services provided by the ICDS centers on a scale of one to five. One being excellent, three being okay, and five being terrible, or that service is not provided at that center. So women rated the ICDS to be very beneficial towards their child's health, and they also rated the nutritional scheme to be a two. Um, they rated their child's overall health to be somewhere in between very good and good, and they viewed the sanitation education provided by the ICDS to be between good and okay. Um, the bathrooms were rated a 4.5, mainly because at two out of three of the centers, there were no bathrooms. But at one of the centers, there was a bathroom, but it was not functioning. And so one of the respondents rated that bathroom as a four. For the, also part of the qualitative analysis, um, the in the ICDS, Anganwadi, and Helper questionnaires, we asked them if what the food rations that they provided were. So two out of three of the centers provided rice, dal, oil, vegetables, and firewood. Only one of the centers provided the nutritional supplements for women, for pregnant women, and all, all three of the centers provided the four staple foods of the ICDS, also known as the halwa, kichidi, um, MTF, or modified therapeutic food, and kukure. So in conclusion, I found that the ICDS nutritional scheme is beneficial towards reducing childhood malnutrition in Oropoly only towards the beneficiaries who actively participated in the program. Um, I found that nutritional awareness in this village is something that is hindering the health of the children in Oropoly, very similar to the study conducted by Child Rights and You that stated a similar conclusion, saying that nutritional health is something that villages do not, village people do not really understand. Um, and I fa and um, one of my main suggestions for this is that the ICDS mothers meetings that are supposed to happen once a month, every month, should include a nutritional education program. That way the women can start learning about nutrition and implement that in their households. And I believe that teamwork between the government, the ICDS workers, parents and children is of the highest regard to ensure proper implementation of the ICDS nutritional scheme. And further on, I suggest that ICDS centers should be located within government primary schools. This would ensure that children would have a smooth transition onto primary school because the teachers from the primary school and the Anganwadi workers can 
coordinate for providing lesson plans all the way up to the child's preschool involvement or primary school involvement, as well as the children's health could be, the children's long-term health could be monitored closely by the Anganwadi workers and also through teacher participation. And so in another part of my conclusion is this part of the flowchart, which is how the, gut, how the ICDS scheme would work in a perfect world. So as you can see, there's the Andhra Pradesh government at the very top, and then the Anganwadi Center receives money and supplementary nutrition. And then the center remains open and all the ICDS services are provided. From there, children perform optimally and remain attending at the center, and parents are happy with the program and children continue to ICDS participation. However, this is not the case in the village of Oropali. Um, more so, a, a flowchart like this happens where we start with the Andhra Pradesh government and then the An Anganwadi Center either receives no money or supplementary nutrition or no money but supplementary or nutrition and yeah, a mixture between those. And then the center must either close for the month, provide no and provide no supplementary nutrition for children, or stay open and provide no supplementary nutrition. Um, if a center closes, children suffer nutritionally and remain idle at home. If a center remains open but provides no supplementary nutrition, then children will suffer nutritionally for the month. This leads to parents being angry because their children are not performing the way that they should be if they're actively participating in the ICDS scheme. And parents cannot do proper work if their children are at home. And so parents pull their children out of the ICDS scheme and they're sent to a different school in the village, which would most likely account for why some, why there's so much incomplete data towards the end of the scheme. And that concludes my experience. So um, this video depicts the, the f I, this video depicts some of the food provided at the center. This was during my first questionnaire with the Anganwadi teachers and helpers, and um, they pulled out the food so that I could look at it. So I'll just play this video. Everybody. Hi, um, I am here with an Anganwadi and I do just finished the questionnaire. Yeah. And this is the food that they provide for the three, six to three-year-olds. It is soy bean and wheat flour. And then they um, mix it with hot water. And then they serve it at home. But the problem is they don't really know if the children are eating this food. Or if sometimes it's given to the buffaloes because it it makes more milk and there's not enough Sorry, <laughs> it's not done. Sorry. Um, so this was the food, and then this was part of my cultural experience at the at Oropali. I can tell you right now, I would go back to that village in a heartbeat to play with those children for another hour. They were so much fun. They exuberated so much life, and they were just oh, I loved those kids. Um, so this was the top picture was the focus group discussion. 
And the picture in the middle there with the kids holding their hands like this is how they receive kukure. And these were actually children that went to the government primary school who came during their lunch break to gather food. And um, my favorite picture is the one at the top corner over there with me talking to those children. Ugh, I loved them. They were so much fun. So, yes. And um, another cultural experience that I had was dancing at Ikrasat. Dr. Rosanna Mula gave me the privilege of joining the Rhythm of Life celebration. And I was originally only planning on doing the shaking part to a video. And then word got out that I actively do Zumba at home and they needed another dancer to dance with my friend Neha. So I got pulled into dancing and Neha and I choreographed a, a whole dance routine and performed it and it was a lot of fun. And then the highlight of that evening was definitely um, winning the Best Dressed Award I with my African and Indian fusion, which was a lot of fun. And so thank you. And just to thank everyone at Ikrasat for hosting me and thank you to Dr. Dar for allowing me to work at your prestigious institution. And thank you to my amazing supervisors, Dr. Banslin and Dr. Supervisor, uh, Dr. Supervisor, Dr. Padmaja, <laughs> for allowing, for just allowing me to learn under you. You guys are just so, so intelligent. And it was so amazing being able to learn from your expertise. I honestly feel like I've learned more in these two months than I may have learned in my whole junior year of high school. So <laughs> thank you so much for that. And thank you to Dr. Deb, who took me under his wing during the first week while I was at Ikrasat and introduced me to everything and got me situated. And thank you to the whole MIP department. You guys have taught me wealth on being passionate and being intelligent and also being innovative. So thank you for everything that you have all taught me and this trip will stay with me for life. So I just really, I appreciate everything that you all have done for me. Thank you. And the floor is now open for any questions. So. I chose Oropali because of its proximity to Hyderabad, as well as Ikrasat has a strong foundation in the village. So I thought that it would be the easiest to obtain the confidential anthropometric measurements from. And also it had three ICDS centers, which would have which provided a much larger a much larger sample size. It's a wonderful presentation. Thank you. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, and you noted that uh, children didn't like all the stuff that's served uh, by this ICDS scheme, right? Only yeah. maybe kukure was fine, but others. Kukure. Yeah. So what do you think? Like, uh, uh, because they are the kids whom we are targeting. So should the government think of uh, serving them some good stuff? What do you think? I, I think that it's definitely something between the government trying to to provide cost-effective food that is also nutritious but what the government is lacking that the food is very unappealing to the human eye children do not want to eat something like that there's a reason why it's being fed to buffaloes you know although it is producing a higher milk yield so that is showing that the food is nutritious there's that disconnect between the thought process of oh it's producing a higher milk yield let's feed it to our kids because maybe they'll do better just because the food is unappealing. And um, a lot of parents stated that while they knew, and like they knew that the food was nutritious, they found that it wasn't adequate for their children. It was only adequate for animals. So I think the government could definitely do something to make, maybe push an initiative to say, ICDS food tastes good too, or I don't know, something that would improve this because as of right now, not looking very good. <laughs> uh, 
So thank you, I enjoyed that. So you say that only 25 or 30 percent of records were complete. Mm -hmm. So was there any common characteristic of that 25 or 30 percent? Were they the best educated, the worst educated? Or... Unfortunately, the anthropometric data that was, that was gathered, all they had was the parent's name, the child's name, and the gender and then the center that the child belonged to. So I would have loved to have been able to go deeper into that analysis, but it wasn't present, so, yes. Oh, yes, actually, in continuous that, that question and uh, this first question. So uh, I think you have noted down some dropouts. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, what we have found in most of the dropouts, far away from the Anganwadi centers, mostly scheduled caste colonies, far, mm. far away places, and some of the mothers wants to take their children along with their workplace. Oh, I see. So, if they send their children to the Anganwadi, they lose their base income. Mm. And some some of the category, different category, for example, some houses, they will collect the food mm -hmm. uh, and eggs, whatever it may be weekly ones, mm -hmm. but they don't ch send their children to the Anganwadi. So what will happen, the Anganwadi effects are two, twofold. One is education and social and eco economic develop social development, basically children. The other is food and nutrition. So studies, uh, many studies, the impact of sociological aspects at early childhood is having more positive returns at later adult stage. Mm -hmm. So that we are, as I think, we have totally ignored. Uh, this is what, uh, and uh, what, uh, so what is, for example, who is dropping out? For example, even rich households also, they cannot send. So mm -hmm. who is dropping out? And whether these, this program is reaching to the targeted people. If they are reaching targeted people, if there is 10% dropout or 20% dropout, there is no problem. But the 20% and 20% are targeted people who are very poor, then it will be a problem. Right. This is basically through just talking to the unga to the ICDS mothers and just getting a feel of the village. Um, one woman stated that the majority of them pull together the food and feed it to their buffaloes throughout the village. So I'm not really sure. Unfortunately, I didn't under I don't understand Telugu, so I couldn't really get all the full comparison, but. Exactly. Well, 
Um, so basically it was my hair, if I'm honest, um, my braids, usually my hair is not braided like in America, it's just straight, but it's hard to take care of. So I braid, so I got braids done before I came here. Right. It's, it was just down. Yeah. So, um, when I was walking through the village and my hair was just swinging everywhere and, um, people like children would point and be like, Oh, look, there's you know, someone who's not from here. And so when we were getting the data, we would ask for the data and all of the Anganwadi workers and helpers asked about my hair before they gave us the data. So um, they asked, can we touch it? Can, like, how do you do this? Is it a machine? How many people, how many hours did it take? You sat there for eight hours and got this done? How is this possible? And so there's actually, I should have put that picture, but there was one picture that I had of the Anganwadi helper playing with my hair and kind of just like figuring out how long it can stretch and <laughs> exactly what the whole gimmick was. So I think it was my hair, but. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.